What's on Your Mind is sponsored by ACC 339 Dudley Road, New Style Radio 98.7 FM, Breakthrough Studios and Reggae Jam Jam. Good evening guys, how you doing? Welcome to another What's on Your Mind. I am Carl, the program is produced by Breakthrough TV. Let me say thank you for tuning in. This is a live stream right here. We're going out now live, so don't forget to share the program. Let me say thank you for tuning in. I want to say all thanks for all you guys um, with your response from the last show. Let me say massive respect. Let me say thank you and thanks for all the love that you've actually shown. Please continue to do this. Yeah. I also want to big up my special guest last week, Diagra. <laughs> and he, he says you can pronounce that name so, so different. You know what I mean? He's been called so many different names. He says he's been called Diagra, Diagra, Diagra. He's even been called Viagra. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll, I'll actually leave that one to you. When I say it was great to have him in the studio, you know what I mean, and chatting us. The, the program, as I say, has changed up a little bit. It's still what's on your mind. And, um, but I've, I've put a different couple of different things in it, you know what I mean? And I'm going to have a little rant at the end. My rant, something I really want to rant about, which I haven't heard. Um, anybody have mentioned this wonderful lady, you know what I mean? So I'm going to have a little rant. So we're the, at the end of the show, you know what I mean? I say, let me say thanks to all you guys for tuning in. The United States, big, big shout out to you. Also, big shout out to you, Rose Jade, Michelle, Sean, Colin, big, big shout out to you. Hella, Hector, big, big shout out to you. My own family, there's so many of us that I can't shout out to you all. I'd be, if I shout you all, I'll be here all night. But you guys know who you are. I still send the love to wherever you are, you know what I mean? Canada, Jamaica, Birmingham, United States, you know what I mean? Italy, my good friends in Italy. I know it's hot over there. I know it's very hot over there. And some of you have gone down south, which is South America, you know what I mean? Big, big shout out to you there. You know, you know who I mean. You know who you are, guys. So let me say big, big shout out to you. Hope all is well. And, and I'll say it's been hot in Europe. We haven't had it so hot here, but um, it may come, you know what I mean? And, but it, it seems to be hot in all different parts of the world, you know what I mean? The, the world seems to be getting hotter and hotter all the time, and we don't know why this is. But we don't know why that is. Scientists say they know, but, you know, they don't know. And as I say, it's what's on your mind. And I'll tell you this now. <laughs> Let me just do this now. I've got a lot of things on my mind. But if I was to say all the things that's on my mind today, there wouldn't be time. And it would blow up the internet. <laughs> Trust me. So... I better, I better leave that one and put it back here. <laughs> I, I better put it back here because it would blow up the internet. <laughs> and we don't want to do that. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Anyway, as I say, we, we on, our, on our program this week, we got a very, very special guest. Um, she, used, she sings with the cool notes from London. Um, she has her own singing career. And she's been around for many, many years. And, you know, she's going to tell us, have a little chat with us, and she's going to tell us where she's actually going and how things are going and the music she's actually making. I mean, so we, we welcome um, our wonderful Miss Heather Haywood. Miss Heather Haywood, are you there? Let me say good afternoon. Good, thank you. Good, thank you. How's your day been? Uh, been a busy one, been a busy <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Been a busy one for me, yeah. Let me say welcome to Breakthrough TV. And thank you. Thank, thank you for taking the time out. Because I know no problem, say, no problem. It's it's been very, very busy. So let me say thank mm -hmm. you for actually taking the time out. My pleasure, my pleasure. Much uh, yeah. Um so what have you been up to? Well, wow, over the years, so well, lots of things. Where do I start? Do I start at the things. beginning or do I start right now at the end? You no, know, uh, start well. start somewhere. Let's start at the beginning. Start at the beginning. And the beginning. We, we, I mean, the beginning I know, of my. I, I know who you are, and we all know who you are. Yeah. So let's go back to yeah. say, the eighties when it was actually okay. When you appeared on top of the pops, uh, with the cool notes okay. and all that sort of thing, that sort of groove. Yeah. Okay. Back in the day, you know, the, the top of the pops. That was a that was a big one for us because don't forget we used to be a lovers rock band okay. when we first begun. Yeah. So we transitioned, we changed. Well, we used to do um, soul as well in our live gigs. Yeah. I started with the band at 15. And the band wow. started a long time before me because the guys started um, when they were about 14, I think. Yeah. So there's a couple of years difference between the girls and the guys. And um, so they started from school with the band. And yeah. then we had different girls. That I, I was the, the last girl to join the band. So... 
there used to be three girls in the band. So oh. the band used to be an eight-piece band, not a seven-piece at one stage. Then two girls dropped out. Lorraine was left. And then I joined the band from an audition um, that they put in the newspaper. And yes, and I was 15, still at school and everything else. And yeah, my journey I, I, began then. I was going to say, because you're very young. How was it for you yeah. at that sort of age? Very, very young. I know. Uh, it was, I mean, you know, it's difficult when you've got parents who are strict, especially a dad that's very strict. So um, I had to make sure I did all my chores and make sure I still went to school and did everything that I needed to do so that I could get to do the rehearsals and things like that. When I got to 16, I, you know, I was able to move around a little bit more, um, but still under the thumb of, you know, the house and stuff like that. But, you know, we had a manager. Stephen's dad was like a father to all of us. So okay. he used to look after us. Okay. So, yeah. And who, who was Stephen's dad, the, you say? Stephen McIntosh. He's the leader. He was the leader of the band, Mr. McIntosh. Okay. Glenn, uh, yeah, he's passed away a few years was back now. Was he related but, to Carl? Carl McIntosh from um, Loose Dance? Was he related no, no, to... no, he's not, no. The thing is, the funny thing is, everybody thinks that Stephen's son, Bradley McIntosh from S Club 7, yeah. They think that Carl McIntosh is Bradley's dad, but it's yeah. actually Stephen from my band. That's his oh, father. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean... Mm. Carry on. Yeah, I was telling you about the journey. You know, yeah. um, as I said, I joined the band thinking that it was a soul band and it was a reggae band at the time. I wasn't disappointed. Um, it was different. Um because I used to like Aretha Franklin and like, you know, my uh, Shaka Khans and people like that. That was the sort of people I sort of aspired to. Mm. But hey, Lovers Rock was good. It was cool. We did a few soul numbers when we did live gigs as well. Mm. Um, I mean, ours was a journey. Um, we learned the hard way. Yeah. We grafted, you know. Yeah. So vocals were, you know, our vocals were natural vocals. We didn't have auto-tune and auto-tune. things like they've got now. We had to make sure everything was sung in tune, even if it took all night. Most of the time it did take all night for us to uh, basically do everything. Sometimes you're rolling out of the studio like three or four o'clock in the morning just because we couldn't get one note. (laughs) (laughs) And we had to get that one note or whatever it was. But yeah, we learned our craft. Let's just say we learned our craft. And it was fun doing it, you know. Um, It was like a big family. We're all similar ages. And we all grow, uh, grew up together, so, mm. yeah. What are some of the places at the pit of time you used to play in London, I presume? Oh, we, we played everywhere, you name it. We, you know, when, when we started, we mm. did a lot more gigs, like in Birmingham, um, Huddersfield, and places like that. And that was mm. when I was, like, a little teenager. Yeah. But then as our journey began, when we transitioned and became the soul band, you know, had the big hits and stuff like that, we did like the Dominion Theatre, the um, the Hammersmith Empire, or the Hammersmith Odeon, and places like that. We did all the major venues, um, all the major ones. You name it, we did them all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you made it to Top of the Pops. We did Top of the Pops. Yes, we did. We did Top of the Pops about three times, I think it was. Um, so yeah, we because we had Spend the Night, uh, yeah. which was our biggest hit. That went to that went to straight to number eleven in the national charts. And then we had In Your Car that came straight after that, which went to number 13, which was really good. And then we had a few other minor hits after that, yeah. How did you feel at a particular period of time? I I suppose because... Sorry, having all those hits and being on on the top of the pops, which was one of the most popular (laughs) music show at that particular Um, period of time. I'm telling you, the thing is, Having that show and meeting all the different artists, you know, like Kenny G and all these other bands, you know, backstage, um, it was, wow, it was like an eye-opener. It was what we did so many years in the music industry. Well, we'd only been in the mid, you know, in that field for maybe about five, six years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coming up and doing this with big artists and people like that, it was amazing. But we never had time to enjoy it, though, you know? That's the thing. Because we were a funk, um, we were a band that played out often. Yeah. And um, so if we went from Top of the Pops, we'd go straight to another gig somewhere. That's right, yeah. So 
enjoying ourselves, it was it was difficult. So, you know, when people used to say, don't you go clubbing and stuff like that? No, we didn't. Because um, it was all about doing PAs. We had hundreds of PAs we used to do every every weekend or even during the week. We did every PA around the country, out of this country, Germany, everywhere. We, we travel. We travel the world. And I was going to ask you, what was it like being on the road um, for a young lady uh, at that particular period of time? You know what? It was what? amazing because, we, like I said to you, we had our manager, our, road, our manager with us, our personal manager. He was mm. like our dad. He kept yeah. us in check. <laughs> so it's like having your father, you know, on, on the gigs with you everywhere we went. So it was it was nice. It was tiring, mind you, but it was um, going from different hotels to this hotel, meeting this one, meeting all the different stars and things like that. It, you know, although we never got to enjoy meeting these people mm -hmm. because they were just like musicians to us. When you meet people like Cool and the Gang and uh, the SOS band, and, and we played with Clear, we, we um, supported Clear and Atlantic Star and people like that. You don't get time to actually enjoy them, That's you know, uh, because we were, I suppose, um, looking at our own, um, you know, our own history as such, because, you know, we're, we're making history with all these big artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is absolutely, this is absolutely marvelous. And you also break out into what we call like a solo career after um Yes, I, I've got a solo after... career as well. I've had a solo career for about um, uh, t um 12 years or more. I, yeah. Even before that, actually. Even before that, 89, I had a solo career because I was signed to um, Polydor for okay. uh, a couple of years. So I had a couple of hits. And then I went and I did lots of work in France and places like that. I used to do lots of... Um, you know, vocals for different producers and stuff. So I used to travel to France and do voc vocals and stuff, record lots of different stuff for people. And I've worked with lots of French producers. I've worked with, oh, you name them. I've, I've been working with them. And I had my own album. I did my own album. I'm going to do my own album as well, another one. But I'm working, currently working on the Cool Notes album. Fantastic. You also met and work with Whitney Houston, the greats. Oh yes, amazing! Yeah, what that was, was like? that was in January. Oh, uh, Whitney Houston was absolutely amazing. I'll tell you a story about mm -hmm. that whole meeting. When we were in Germany and we we met her, that was the first. Um, she I can't remember the song that she was singing, but anyway, um, that was her first hit that she had. And um, we were all on the same stage. We had all these different artists. The show was actually going out to about a hundred hundred million people around Europe. So yeah. that made it even more so. It was a, a massive big show. Uh, it's called Peter's Pop Show. And if you go on YouTube, you'll see, and you put in Peter's Pop Show 1985, Whitney Houston and the Cool Notes, you'll see it comes up there. And we, we come on stage when she's doing her song at the end, and we all sort of roll on the stage with her and yeah. sing with her and stuff like that. Yes. But after we met her, yeah. we had a, a, an offer from Arista USA. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to sign us up after meeting us. Uh, so they wanted to sign the band for like five million back then wow. in 1985. Wow. And well, we didn't know about it. Our managers knew. Our managers knew about it. Our our business manager knew about it, but we didn't. Um, there was lots of wranglings going on, um, lots of things behind the scenes, and in the end, we never got to sign the. Con we no, signed the contract, it. but it was broken. Before our our business manager broke it because he wanted something that they couldn't offer. Mm. So, yeah. How do you feel about that? But, well, I'm telling you, the band was really... That was the, the beginning stages of the band becoming... Um, like, we, we start to slim down the band. Yeah. Um, so, from a seven-piece, we went to a five-piece. From a five-piece, we went to a four-piece. And there it stayed. Um, and then it went to a three-piece, eventually. Yeah. Um, but it broke a lot of people in the band. Um, although... Some members of the band, because they wrote the tracks and stuff like that, had, you know, really good publishing deals and things like that. Yeah. I mean, some of us, you know, made it through. Um, I made it through because I'm a singer and stuff like that. The yeah. other guys who are musicians, it was a little bit more difficult for them because um, it was their life. You know, they grew up in the band. So when our managers started to slim down the band and get rid of people, um, it, was, it was a difficult one. And, you know, there's nothing that I could do. I kept seeing it, thinking, am I going to be next? Is he going to get rid of But no, the girls wouldn't go. It's the guys that would go because we were the front, you know, we were the focal point of the band. Yeah, I see that. 
you also had it was um, difficult I, I can imagine that you also had some probably earlier before you had some associate with pete waterman from stock yeah waterman. pete waterman that that um, came after that yeah came that after. came after yeah he um he signed he signed us up but I didn't actually stay. It was Lorraine, Stephen, and and Joe that mm. stayed. I, I went on and moved on to, and I, I did a solo career. I went and left that for a bit, and I came back after they um, decided to leave Pete Waterman that long. The problem is with Pete Waterman and, and the Cool Notes, it didn't actually work out. Um, okay. They didn't release anything for the Cool Notes. They just okay. sort of shelved everything that the Cool Notes did. All right, and that was that was hmm. that was not the stock Aiken and Waterman thing. It was yes, the same people. PL, same it, okay, I thought it was a PWL. Yeah, PWL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. suppose right. I was just looking for people at the time. Um, you know, chucking money at people doing making music, but not actually doing anything with the cool. Yeah. They did nothing with the cool. Yeah, Although you, had... you, we do have a back catalog with them. Yeah. And then you had people like Kylie, Jason Donovan, and all them came after. And even Sunita. None of them, they were before. They were before. before. They were before. Yeah, they were before. They, okay. were, they were already established, yeah. Uh, all right. And uh, Mel and Kim and people like that were with Stock Aiken and Waterman. Was, yeah, so they had all these people well before. And um, what was it, Princess? The, the, say I'm your number one. The singer that yeah. said, say yeah. I'm your number one. Number one. Yeah, no yeah she was with them as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely marvellous. Yeah. And let me ask you then, what made you wanted to be a singer, an entertainer, hard question, yeah. and a musician? What, uh, you made, know, what made you want to do that? I, you know, um, I, I, I didn't want to be a singer when I was about <laughs> eight years old, nine years old. I wanted to be an ear hostess. That's what I wanted. Right. Or a teacher. Be, or a teacher, because my family are all teachers. You know, my right. brothers, they're all teachers. My sister, she went into, you know, she did a business degree. I did a bit, I did a, a teaching degree as well after, this is well after the cool notes and stuff like that. Um, so we were all teachers. But in the beginning, I wanted to be an air hostess, like all little girls want to be air hostess. Then I heard Aretha Franklin singing. Then I heard the Jackson Five. And I think, oh, this sounds good. And then I used to do lots of concert at, concerts at school. And um, so they used to rope me in to do all these different things. And then one guy at my school, he we, we had a little band. I was about 13, a little group yeah. at school. Yeah. So um, that's when I started my actual singing uh, venture. Um, we went to a studio, Owen Gray Studio. I think I was about 13 at the time. And he had a song called Over the Rainbow, I think it was called. And okay. the guy was meant to be the lead singer. and the other two girls were just going to be backing vocalists. So we got to the studio now and he started singing. The guy said, the engineer said, no, no, you can't sing. And the next girl sing. So she started singing. He said, no, 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 you can't sing. Then he said, you know what? We'll give it one more try. We'll give you a shot. So if you could sing. <laughs> and then uh, I started singing. He said, no, we found somebody that can sing. Okay, so I cut my first record at 13. Wow. At Owen Gray Studio. This is, but well, they wanted to sign me up, but my dad wouldn't allow it at the time. Yeah. What was it? Uh, that was during, it was called Over the Rainbow, but it didn't come out. It didn't come right. out because the guy that was um, that was the leader of the little group that we had, he had the he he wanted he didn't want to use it because he wasn't the singer. That's why. Nice. So it never it never came out. So, so you got the ego thing going on there. Well, he was only like fourteen, wasn't he? Well, so fourteen, fifteen. So he didn't really want. He didn't want a female. He didn't want me to be the singer. Well, no. but, yeah, yeah. It's funny. It was funny. It's funny. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Tell us about your solo project. Um, when you come in to be like a solo, do a solo project on your own. Well, I I I did. Um, I've done about four solo projects so far mm. um i've worked with a a, a, a guy called nikki b and okay. i had a track two tracks in france 2017 um called um give it up and uh yeah give it up was one that was a big track in in, uh, in france yeah, okay. and then i worked with another guy somebody asked me to you know got in contact with me via uh, messenger and said to me, we're Cool Million and we love your music. We've, we're big fans of the Cool Notes. We would like you to work with us. So I said, ooh, okay, Cool Million. I said, I know your name. But anyway, 
Um, so I said, what would you like me to do? They said, well, we've got a track. We're going to send it to you. You have to write to it. So I wrote to it and um, I wrote the track. And so, the, you know, all the 100% of the track was mine. Um, and that became a number one UK soul chart. And it went into quite a few of the charts over here as well. So it did very well with them. It's the only number one that they've had so far. <laughs> and this is from last year. So, yeah, last July, it was number one in the UK soul charts. Yeah, that's a great track. And I, I worked with another, um, some, um, another duo called AP Connection. Now, they work with quite, they work with Joyce Sims. Joyce Sims was on their album. Mm. And they also had a few big American stars on their album. This was not last year, year before. And um, that album went to, I think, number one as well in in the UK soul charts and quite a few different charts as well. And I had a track on there as well. I'm now working again with this, with these guys. Yeah. We've got a really nice uh, sort of slow, slow song. It's quite slow. R&B track coming out as well. Um, and that's going to be out on their album. I'm not sure when, but look out for it. It's called uh, The Right Time, that yeah. one. And then I've got another one with Sugar Rainbow, Rainbow Funk. That one's out this week, at the end of this week. That's called Think About. Okay, right. How do you find it? As for the songs? corner. Sorry, sorry, sorry. How... Yeah, yeah, I do right, I do right. I do right, yeah. I say, how do you find it writing songs? Well, I suppose if I hear, it's the chorus that comes to me, the, the, the title comes to me first. Mm -hmm. And then I work around the title of the song. Yeah. So... But then it takes a little bit, it takes a while to frame the song. So yeah. when I go into the studio and start singing it, mm -hmm. that's when it, the actual magic happens because then all the lyrics that I've got written down might not be in the song because I've taken them out and put in what I think is right for that song. Yeah. And it's, um, <laughs> it is, it's going to be very, very strange like that, isn't it? Are you, do you enjoy you, It's of strange, course you, yeah. Of course you enjoy Do you enjoy writing? Yes, I do. I do. Yeah. 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 I write from what I think. I write from the heart, basically. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. And I write about real things. I don't write about fake things and oh, stuff like that. Write about... I, write about, yeah, I write about life. I write yeah. about, well, love. I write about, yeah, the right time. <laughs> yeah. What about writing? Because some people write from the basis of, um, they put themselves in, in that situation without being in that situation. Yes, I've done that on my album. I did an album 2012, and a few tracks on there was about my situation at the time. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I do. I think, you know, a lot of us do that. You know, we yeah. write from how we feel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. I, I, I write songs as well, and I, I, I saw that there's, there's this track I got, which I actually put myself into the track. And somebody said to okay. me, it's, that's happening to you. I said, no, I, I write about myself within that track, but I've never experienced it. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, well, the thing is, if I'm going to write about myself in a track, I'm going to put down the things that I've experienced, but, you know, and yeah, that will be me. Yeah. And tell us who are some of the great writers or people you've actually worked with in the business. Oh, wow. Um, who have we worked with? We've worked with so many different people. We've worked with Loose Ends. We've worked with oh, um, but, but the whole, Soul. We've worked, yeah. What was it like? We, you know, with Loose Ends or Soul to Soul? Loose Ends, yeah. Loose Ends are really, really, really cool. Yeah, and you know, Karen Wheeler. We used to work with her as well. Oh, nice. um, yeah, you know, the amazing people. We all come from the same generation and uh, and same era. So back then, we all got on very well. What I actually liked about that period of time is the fact before mm. that we was all listening to the American sound, even though we yes. still do. And yes. we, we never sort of really see like a great funk band or a great soul band before that in the UK from UK home base. Mm. So when mm. you guys, mm. Loose Ends, yourself, um, yeah. the, the group, um, the Cool Notes, um, yeah. all those artists, yeah. we've landed. Yes. yes, and that's absolutely. what I liked about the whole period of time. Yeah. You know, when we when we did spend the night, there was yeah. um, a DJ, a DJ um, well, I can't remember his name, but he was in the studio when we were recording, and he's on he's on my soul radio actually now, and he he basically said, um, "Ooh, 
that track sounds really good. Is that an American track? The, he said, because that track's going to be a big hit. That was Spend the Night. And yeah. he said, well, we said, no, it's our track. It's not American. And, it's, you know, so he said, that's going to be massive. That's what happened. Yeah. The Pirates played us. We just, you know, it's the Pirates back then. The Pirates are the ones that played all the soul music back then mm. and pushed us to the charts because we didn't have any help from the major record or radio stations or anything like that. We basically um, had to do it on our own through the Pirates and PAs and things like that. That's how we managed to, you know, um, become who we are today. Yeah. And it was hard getting to the big giants, who we all know who they are. <laughs> you know, that big giants. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, the thing is, we had some, we had so many of the big recording companies after us, mm. but it was our manager that blocked them. Why? Um, so that was, he wanted, he wanted, he had a recording company, so he wanted us to go through his company, but the recording, the major recording companies give him the money, so he becomes like a subsidiary of them, I and they see. said no, no. We had CBS, we had RCA, we had all. We had them all. We had them all chasing us. Yeah, and that's was, why... It was a great band. Mm. It was a great band. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Absolutely. And it was absolutely. a great um, soul funk band. And I say, um, in the UK, yeah. there wasn't a lot of that side of sound homegrown nah. from the UK no. at that particular period no. of time. No, it wasn't happening. Yeah. You know, so as I say, when no, you guys... As, as I said before, you guys sold out um, loose ends yourselves um, the cool notes, yeah. all those bands, yeah. um, Karen Wheeler, um, yeah, Jackie Graham, and all them Jackie were Graham, all the same princess, time yeah, yeah, all those princesses, right? Which yeah. was home ground, you, you, you yeah. guy actually landed, and it was great, yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely it was really, really cool, absolutely, marvelous. it was really cool, absolutely, amazing. yeah, and let's say you it, keep, it, it, you know, Karen. When you look, at, when you look back on all these things, you you know the ju the journey hasn't finished, you know, because no, no. we're still working. Yeah. I, I still sing. I I you know I I'm I'm working every weekend anyway. Most weekends I'm all, you know doing gigs and things like that, or if I'm not doing gigs, I'm in the studios. So yeah. there's always something being done. So I've always been a singer, you know, for over like 40 years now. I started when I was like 13. So, you know, well, even before that, I started singing. So um, I was doing competitions at 10 years old. So, yeah. Marvellous. So I've been in the business now for a long while. A long time. So who are some of your giants? You know, I call giants of music. The, the, the really good guys, the giants, who influence you. I know Eric, oh, of uh, Like I said... Like I said to you, Shaka Khan, Whitney yeah. Houston, one yeah. of my big influences, people like Patti LaBelle, um, the SOS band. We, I love anything funky, you know. Um, you know, we we worked with people like the Cool and the Gang, uh, like and the SOS band, and Atlantis Star. All these people. There's a band called Clear Intimate Connections. They did a track. We yeah. were we we were on. We supported them. These are the people that you know we really look up to. Luther Vandross, yeah, marvelous, all those guys. Marvelous, marvelous. Yeah, yeah, we really, um, yeah. You know, the journey's still going. You know, Carl, the, yeah, the I, journey's I, I, still of course, there. Of course, it is. Of course, it is. That's, that's the why journey's I, still there. It, 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 it is going. And I say, and you're still working, and you're still doing different things, and you still got a lot of projects. And you, you tell me, you, you work on radio. Radio? Yeah, I do a radio, a radio station. Well, yeah, we do Street Sounds Radio. Yeah. You know, you know Morgan, Morgan, Morgan Khan. He um he was one of the first guys back in the day with him and um Steve Walsh. They yeah. we used to do a lot of soul nights out with them. They used to we used to do like the the coach rides to Liverpool and places like that, and do lots of these big shows with them. And Morgan Khan's now got his own radio station called Street Sounds Radio. Yeah. They're in South End on Sea, but we do a remote show from um, Stephen's house. It's Saturday and Sunday. We do like the, the morning set slot, the breakfast yeah. show, 8 till 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. I would be on this week as well, 8 till 10, on That's a great. Saturday and on Sunday as well. That's great. Okay, how do you see music now from what we call the good old 80s? I don't, I'm not saying what you're doing, how the music has changed into sort of different group. Yeah. Because you could do, you could go to reggae, you could do pop, you could do soul, yeah. you could do everything mm -hmm. at that particular mm -hmm. time. And I've always said, mm -hmm. all the artists from the 60s and the 70s sort of was all playing and getting better and better by all the time. And in the 80s, mm -hmm. it all hits yeah. very perfectly well. That's right. How do you Absolutely. see that? 
<laughs> well, the thing is with music nowadays, yeah. music is more electronic. Yeah. yeah. Although if you're an American band, they're still very much into live musicians. That's right. Americans always believe that you have to have live musicians. But over here, we do a lot of electronic music and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, digitize everything. So you don't, you can just have one person playing the keyboards or you got sounds, you got, you can just pull up different sounds and, and make a record, make a track. Yeah. So, um, so, so it's very different. And vocals are very different now because yeah. you can sing, everybody can sing. Everybody can sing because all they've got to do is change your vocal because there's things that the vocal changes on, on the, you know, on the programs and things. So you can be singing out a tune, but it will tune you up as you're singing yeah. and it will bend your notes as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, it's very different to how we, we did our craft. Yeah. We did our craft the right way. So that's yeah. probably why we're more longevity. That's and true, these ones true. will not be, you know, they, they're not. A lot of them are not around anymore. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's like one of the, some of the songs you hear now. You know what I mean? Away from you guys <laughs> who still make music, who still makes good music. Some of the songs you hear now, you think, oh, I couldn't listen to that in 18 months. Time. I know. <laughs> it's, it's true, but, and but you won't. Not, because anyone. It's, not, but it's not there in eight months' time. No, no. That's just it. And, because people and, have forgotten that track. Yeah. And the melody's not there. The, the, the groove is no. not there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, I think, yeah. you know, the difference with us back then is that everybody had an individual sound. Yeah. yeah? You, everybody knew the cool notes or they knew loose sense or they knew soul to soul or they knew Jackie Graham or they knew the bands, all the bands, because everybody was different. Like all the Americans had a different sound. Yes. But now when you listen to singers, everybody wants to sound like a Rihanna or a Beyonce or they want to sound like this or, you know, th their favorite person. Yeah. So there's no individuality with a lot of singers nowadays in america you still got the individuality because americans can they, they can top it yeah. but in britain I, I find that we do have a little bit of a problem especially if the mainstream music not yeah. talking about black music i'm talking about mainstream music because everybody yeah. it's a, it's now become the uh black music origin of black music Whoa. you know so you Anybody can sing black music or soul music, yeah, but yeah. Um, but to actually bring it across, they are, don't get me wrong, there's some amazing uh, British singers, you know, yes, Caucasian is, singers that can yeah. sing, mm -hmm. they can sing, um, but they are not, they're not us, basically. They're not us. I'm not going to put any, I'm not putting a dampener down on anybody because yeah. I think everybody has, you know, ha, ha, has a, a way into the music business, and everybody wants to, um, to 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 really achieve something in life, and that's good. And I, I think that's really good. Yeah. But I think, you know, black music in this country at the moment is not like how it used to be. No, I think no. if you notice, music, a lot of um, British music is not being heard, yeah. like it should be. That's There's right. so many talented black British artists that's in this great. country. They, you don't hear half of them. No. You see some of them, but you don't see the ones that are actually amazing. I've gone out and I've listened to some vocalists, amazing. They blow, they blow the socks off of you. They sound like Americans, yeah. you know, I'm absolutely amazing. And that's why we've got to look to the future and actually encourage a lot of them to, you know, stay hold fast because uh, the music industry is different. It's yeah. not like it used to be. You used to be able to earn a lot of money back in the day. Now you have to, you have to work. You have to do live gigs to make any money. You don't make money from sales of records because um, you could make ten thousand records and get into a number one and and um, the iTunes charts and things like that. So before, when we were number eleven, we had to sell over fifty thousand records to get to number eleven. Yeah. So yeah, it's a lot different. It's changed. It, it, it is. Um how do you see as how can we encourage the sort of sound you're t talking about the sort of talent you're talking about how can we encourage it how can we do that well i think there's so many they are lots of young people coming up you know and they are encouraged they have people around them mm -hmm. that are looking out for them as well um a lot of them go to a lot of these places singers places mm -hmm. um you know um where they they just go and they they what do they call them there um they everybody likes to you know it's not karaoke not karaoke there's a full live band on stage 
and everybody would get up and do a song of their own. But then there's somebody there that's listening to them and mm. they mold them and look after them. Like I have a lot of friends like that. Yeah. Like at that open mic session. Open mic sessions, yeah. yeah. There's lots of open mic sessions. Yeah. There's some really. I used to host one in in Troy uh, in Shoreditch called the Troy Bar. Yeah. That's where a lot of singers come from in the Troy Bar. And I used to host one in um, Piccadilly as well. So there's back in you know back in the 2005, 2006, 2008, you have lots of open mic, really good open mic places um, that used to used to listen to a lot of amazing vocalists. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely great. You talk about but, you know, we, oh, sorry. Yeah. Karen. Karen. I you you were saying how 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 can we help the young ones? Yeah. Well, you know, we've got to we have to direct them, yeah. We have to show them how it is and how how it is to 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 be um like we are, longevity in the music business. Not just we you know, see the thing is we we've done our craft. And we want to show them how it actually works and and how um, how not to be conned, how not to want fame straight away because it doesn't work that way, and how not to get dejected or feel you know um, you know because I haven't made it, they're going to drop out. No, we want you to stay, and you know if you're amazing, we want you in the business because we need you in the business. That's right. That's right. You talk about America. Um, what was it like you going to the States? States were Ameri amazing. You know, um, they, they, well, it's different. <laughs> you know, you, you're like a, you're like a fish out of water when you go to America. This <laughs> is a big place, isn't it? <laughs> so, well, the thing is, you think, they say that every American can sing. Even yeah. if they're singing out of tune, they're singing from the heart. And yeah. Americans, they can sing. They listen they to you. They got soul. <laughs> That's where the soul is. They That's got where soul. The soul is. Listen, I am telling you. And I, with me, I listen. I learn from the best. And they are some of the best. Patti LaBelle, my favorite. I love her, how she hits those notes. Shaka Khan, my girl. You know, Whitney Houston. If you're going to sing, you've got to sing out. You've got to belt it. And that's me. I'm a little bit of a belter. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so you you love the stage. I love the stage. Yeah. I am. Um, my my life is a stage. I, I'm gonna say you never thought of leaving, and you know. I, well, I I sort of slowed down on it, you know. Yeah. And yeah. then when I um I, I remember when I had my son, I I, I left the business for a little bit, oh. and then I thought, oh, <laughs> I need to get back into this. I can't because I I, I wasn't in the band then, and then I rejoined them. <laughs> I left them and then I rejoined. So, yeah, well, they wanted me to rejoin anyway. So, um, yeah, it was just a temporary sort of measure, yeah. having children and stuff like that. So, yeah. You have to do that. So, it will really rub things. Yeah. Well, you know, it, music. if music is in your soul, like music's always been a part of me. Mm. It's been my life. It's mm. almost like, you know, it's a stress reliever. Um, mm. It's how I think. You know, it's um, it's how I make people happy. You know, yes, um, yes. it's everything. I, I'm like a, a be all and end all to everybody and to myself. Yeah, I, it's it's give you that release. It's a bit like yeah, it's a bit like running. Absolutely. It's a bit like jogging. It frees your mind. Yeah, frees your whole body. You yeah, know? yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, you can lose yourself in in the vocals and stuff yeah, like that. That's right. You, you, you yeah. go some, you go somewhere else, which is absolutely amazing. yeah, absolutely, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, this is absolutely marvelous. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely. It's absolutely great. I tell you. And yeah, say, yeah. what have what have you got? Um. Tell us what, what you actually got coming out again. Well, the cool notes. We're doing our album. The album's yeah. nearly finished. It's taken forever because Stephen's always on holiday. <laughs> He's oh. him and his wife are always on holiday. But um, yeah. But now we're we. I think we've got two more tracks left to do. But the album is amazing. I think when people hear this album. It's well worth the listen. And then I've got two other tracks coming out with two other producers. One coming out, I think it's this weekend it's coming out. It's called Think About. It's with Sugar Rainbow and myself. We, we wrote the song together. Yeah. And um, and then there's another one I've got coming out with AP Connection. This one's called The Right Time. It's not finished at the moment. I've done all the vocals. They're just finishing the music and, you know, all the fine touches. Oh, what's the lineup um, for that band? For, for the band now, the cool notes? 
for the cool notes, there's three of us. There's Stephen, Joe, and myself. The two yeah. guys and one girl. Oh. So I'm the main vocalist on, in, in the band. So, yeah. Stephen sings as well. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. And what was it like sort of touring London um, in the 80s? What was London like in the 80s? Oh, I think London, London was on fire. London was amazing in the there's, 80s. There's a, there's, a, there's a reason why I asked you that question. London was amazing. London was the best. It had the best vibe. It Music, people were so happy. Yeah. It was the happiest time. I think the 80s, 85, around that time, was the happiest time. Everybody loved everybody. It was music of love, yeah? Um, you could go into a club. You could, ah, it, it was amazing. That's my era, you know? I love the 80s. I yeah. love the vibe. No trouble. Everybody wanted to, you know, go out to enjoy themselves. It was the best time we've ever had. Yeah, yeah. There's, Those years will never come back. No, nah, there's a reason why I asked that. And I, I recall because we're from up north. Okay. <laughs> I remember. You're up north. Where are you from? What part? I'm Birmingham. <laughs> it's north. Oh, yeah. it's, north. Yeah, it's north. It's north of London, isn't it? We did a lot. We, did, we worked in Birmingham quite a lot. Where we did a lot of gigs in Birmingham. Birmingham. Where in Birmingham? I'm, 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 if I can, I can't even. I, all I know is Spaghetti Junction and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, Spaghetti Junction, all those places. You probably we, work oh, a place like the Night Out. The, the, the Night Out, possibly the Night Out at that particular time. Gold Civita. Possibly. And all, all those sort of clubs that was around in Birmingham. Yeah, City possibly. City yeah, yeah. More than likely. Yeah. 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 Um, well, we did lots of gigs up in Sheffield, Birmingham, Manchester, you name it. We went Newcastle, all them places. Yeah, crazy far, far up north <laughs> yeah far north that's right yeah i was north. saying i was saying um about london i recall yeah. when i went in when i went to london as i said from birmingham when i went to london um my days it was different <laughs> to what i had used I to in the north ah, <laughs> something yeah. something dropped on me <laughs> And oh, the style on the ladies' clothes. It was a oh, different yes. world. <laughs> yes. The clothes was amazing. Amazing. You know, the whole fashion scene. From, you, we had from the fashion. We, yeah, it's true. We always used to say, people up north can't dress. <laughs> <laughs> Stop well, you, it. They, Stop it. It's true. We used to see the men with short trousers. <laughs> But when, you know, we used to say, come down to London, we teach you how to dance and how to dress. But you yeah. know something, yeah. um, saying all that, I love Birmingham because we, we work with a lot of bands, like a band called Bashara, they're from Birmingham. Yeah, Bashara, yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. They, they, they did some stuff with the Cool Notes back in the day. Yeah. Um, and amazing, I just love the Brummy way. The Brummy, you, you guys are so friendly. London is not friendly, you know, no, London, London is, is not fast. friendly. It's so fast up there. It's very fast, that's right. I'm not going to talk about the driving. Ah, yeah. I'm not, yeah. not going to talk about the driving up there. Crazy. Well, I would have thought that Birmingham is even faster now. It's got, it's got a lot better. It's got a lot faster compared to back in yeah, the day. Yeah, you've, you've nearly yeah. caught up to us. You've caught yeah, up to us now. Absolutely, absolutely. Because you're like the second city. Yeah. You're Birmingham after not, London. Not, not is like city. we are the second city. That's right, you are the second city. You're just like us. Yeah, yeah you, definitely you can't get away from us. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the accent's different. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's a great place to be. It's actually a great place to be. You know? I mean, yeah, Birmingham. Yeah, I love Birmingham. Yeah, I used to go there quite a lot. Yeah. 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 It, 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 nice it, people. Actually, yeah, yeah, mm. of course. It's, it's absolutely marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. <laughs> anyway, my time is actually coming to a close. So yeah. I want to say thank you for taking part. Thank you so much, Carl. Yeah, you're welcome. Taking the time out. Anything else you want to tell us? <laughs> uh, well, just listen out for the album. The album's going to be coming out soon, and the mm. new tracks, right, uh, right time. And uh, so, yeah, just check, keep a check on us. Um, I'm on Facebook, so if you want to mm. check me out, I'm Heather Hayward on Facebook, and I'm H Heather on um, H H on Instagram, and I'm also on Twitter. So just check me out on all of these platforms. Marvellous. Well, let me say thank yeah. you for taking the time out. And, um, thank you so much, Carl. Did you enjoy yourself? I did, I did. Yeah. And thank you for contacting me and yeah. asking me to do this um, interview. Thank you.
Um, I've enjoyed enough. it immensely. Thank and I don't much. have a nickname. <laughs> why, is, why is that? <laughs> I heard you say about the nickname of, of the Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was last. <laughs> That was last week guest. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, actually, they used to call Lorraine and myself Pinky and Perky. Pinky and Perky. Because um, Lorraine when was we the used other... to do the reggae songs, they Lorraine used to call us Pinky and Perky. Sorry, Lorraine was the other singer um, in the band. Yeah, she was the other singer. Yeah. Yeah. What is she doing yeah. now? She's working with Shalimar. She's the backing vocalist for Shalimar. Well, oh, it's funny. I was going to mention something about Shalomar because Shalomar is celebrating the 40th, 40th, yeah. 40th yeah. anniversary of the, the first album, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And, they're, they're... and Lorraine's one of their backing vocals. Okay. That's great. Yeah. She... Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's still in the music industry, so she's doing something that she's enjoying. Yeah. Yeah. Are um, you doing any shows, concerts? What are you doing? I, I know you're doing the music. We will be. I, right now, we're concentrating on the album, but I, I do like um gigs and stuff with other people with bands and stuff so i go out and maybe do like pas and things like that mm -hmm. but yeah you know, any you know once we get the gigs we've got some gigs coming up but they're not finalized at the moment so yeah. once i know i will you know mention it let you know yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll message you and if you're coming to my town let me know <laughs> oh 100 <laughs> percent. we were supposed to come up to your town not too long ago but the, uh, the the actual tour got cancelled. Oh, okay. never mind. One of those things. One okay. of those things. Let me say <laughs> once again, Heather. Thank, thank you. you. Thank God you, everyone. You. God bless you. Take, Take care. You. Have a nice week. I should say, Take anybody care. you want to say hello to? Family, friends. Hello. I want to say hello to Stephen, the the band member, and Joe, and to my kids, Mickey, Natalie, Aaron, and um, and yeah, and anybody that well, if they know me, they can say hello to me. <laughs> Hello to you. <laughs> yeah. Say hello to everyone. Hello to everyone who's listening to the show, who's watching the show as well. Thank you. Have Thank you. Yourself. Thanks Thank a you lot, Carl. Bye bye. You take care. Bye bye. You take care. Nice Thanks. having you. Respect. And yes. Right. Right, guys. There you have it. So, you see how it works, guys. So, don't forget, if you want to come in and tell us about your whole musical journey, you are quite welcome to do so right here on Breakthrough TV, yeah? I want to say thanks to all you guys who actually support the program. And thanks to my wonderful guest, Heather Haywood. And as I say, Heather Haywood was originally with the Cool Notes. She started with a reggae band, and then she was with the Cool Notes, and there was a reggae band before they actually changed to like what we call soul and funky band. And as I say, you see her whole journey. So if you want to come and tell us your journey, and as I say, promote any shows you've got, you can come here and do it right at Breakthrough TV. Just hook us up, BreakthroughTV at gmail.com. Or if you know my number, or you know where to find me, I'm everywhere. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm even places I don't even know where I was. <laughs> and you can, you can actually find me there. Yeah? As I say, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the program. I want to say a big shout out to Mr. Um, Mr. G Cross down there in Jamaica. So a big, big shout out to you. Let me say thank you for tuning into the program. And I know you always look up, look, look, look out for the program. Let me say big thank you to you. Also, Mr. Gabidon, I want to say big shout out to you. Hope all is well with you. Cousin Gurley, big, big shout out to you up there in the United States. Let me say big shout out to you. Hector, how you doing? Jude, how you doing? Claudette, how you doing? Paula, how you doing? So many of you. Helen, how you doing? Paula, once again, how you doing? Andrea, how you doing? All your whole family. Lady Carl, big shout out to you. Hope all is well with you. Glenn, not forgetting you, sir. Hope all is well with you. My good friend, Philip, how you doing, sir? Angela Lazara, big, big shout out to you. Pam, big shout out to you. Back to the United States. <laughs> Miss Dan, big, big shout out to you. Back to the United States. All the whole family up there in the United States. Let me say big, big shout out to you. Don't send ever call you. I can't remember all of your names, so... <laughs> I have to I have to leave it that way. So let me say thank you for tuning to the program. Don't forget to please share the program, yeah. Now, I just got over a little rant. Now, there's a lady, a wonderful lady, who's actually won. She actually made history win her first Junior Grand Slam singles title at Wimbledon. Yes. So we want to say big, big shout out to you. And what I've noticed, she hasn't sort of gets the accolade that she actually deserves. You don't see it anywhere. 
And I went on social media this morning and yesterday, and a lot of people say they didn't see it. And so one lady was actually commenting that you guys need to fix up. And she's an American. I'm not saying that's why, that's the reason why she wasn't all over the papers or what we call the press. But it seems she hasn't get um, the publicity that she actually deserved for winning such a great championship. And we wonder why. And one lady actually says, is it just because, maybe because she's, are they just concentrating on the older people at Wimbledon? Yeah, are they just concentrating on the older people there? Or the stars there? But you can't keep always doing that. There's nothing wrong in concentrating on the stars. But you've also got to concentrate on the younger people who's actually doing very, very well. No matter where they're coming from, because they are the future. We hear this many, many times. Yes, they, as I said, they are the future. And they give inspiration to other young people. Yes, so, as I said, this wonderful lady didn't get as much publicity for winning such a champion that she should have got. And so, and I say, I haven't seen it a lot of places. Nobody's talking about it on social media. I've heard a little bit of excuse, you know, um, some silliness, which is absolutely ridiculous. So, fix up. Yes, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the program. Now, I'm also going to have a little chat about, we actually were talking about Shalomar. Shalomar is actually celebrating their 40th anniversary. And the whole thing is like, they're still, they're still, they're still um, so selling tickets like nobody's business. Why am I talking about this? Solomon was like one of the best bands from the 80s. And you know, we're talking about 80s. The lady that we actually has on the show, she actually comes from the 80s. So that's why I'm actually mentioning Shalomar. I, I said Shalomar was one of the best bands. You know what I mean? The original lineup is not the same now, you know, but they're still going. And I, I got to tell you, there's Howard Hewitt, with Jeffrey Daniels. Now, Howard Hewitt and Jeffrey Daniels, that was the, those are the sort of original members. There's one new lady who is, the, who is another member. Um, Jordan Watley has left many, many years ago. So, um, but it is said, and I've actually seen this many, many years ago, that Jeffrey Daniels, Colonel Pop, they actually called him back in the day, he actually taught Michael Jackson the moonwalk. Yes. Yes, as I say, he was actually called Pro Top. So it's good to see that. And I say, Howard Hewitt is actually still there with the arm, um, with the whole band and the whole crew. So it's actually good to see that. And I gotta tell you, that when Shalomar sort of split up in the in the um in the early days, when they actually split before they actually reformed, it leaves a big, big gap, I'm telling you, because they had a lot of fans at that particular period of time. And I I I I, I was already reading an article in Birmingham, and there was they came to Birmingham at the Odeon. And it was rum. It was massive. The queue was from a place called the Odeon all the way around past where the, the new train station is and all the way around to the back of anybody who knows a place called the Futurist. That's how long the queue was. <laughs> I've, been, I've been told at that particular period of time. So it's good to see Shalomar is actually still going. And as I say, Shalomar was a band that, as I say, when they actually stepped away, it left a lot of people actually disappointed, you know what I mean? Because they, were, they had such a groove, you know what I mean? They had such a style, and everybody was sort of, sort of dressing all the Shalomar way, you know? So um, it's, it is good to see that they're celebrating. And can you, can, you, can, you, can you imagine? It's actually 40 years, you know what I mean? They're actually um, celebrating um, that, that, that wonderful album that they have, they've got. So we say big, 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 absolute big respect and big, big shout out to the wonderful Shalomar. Keep going, guys. Massive respect. Yeah. Don't forget, as I say, to like, share, and subscribe to the program. Now, I also want to talk about a little, another lady. And I do know a lot about this lady. Now, I'm just going to pay my respect. And you hear me talk about giants of music. See? You see what I'm doing with the show? You hear me talk about giants of music. Now, my giant of music is a lady from Jamaica. She was actually born in West Kingston. Yes, her name is Marcia Lynette Griffiths. Marcia Griffiths is actually celebrating 60 years in the business of being an artist. And she has been talking to actually Dance Hall Magazine, which is actually marvelous, you know what I mean? And she actually is supposed to be telling Dance Hall Magazine, she says, she actually, um, when she started, you know, she started way, way back. I say she really started. She had her first. She, she was actually working with with um, 
with with Baron Lee and the Dragoneers, and she was she was actually spotted by um, Cox and Dodd, and Cox and Dodd signed her. Um, then she actually had the first the first track called "Feel Like Jumping," la 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 la. That track, yes. So she had that track very very early. That, that was her very first main track. She also did a lot of duets with um, um, Bob Andy, including also Bob Marley, and also uh, quite a few duets with different different artists, which is actually marvelous. And then actually further on in her career, she actually get a couple more tracks going, and then she actually joined up with, have a guess. Bob Andy, even though she had done duet with Bob Andy. She joined up with Bob, Bob Andy for a very, very good period of time. Young, gifted, and black. Yes, that's the big, big shot they actually did. Originally done by the legendary Nina Simone. Then after the period of time, she actually, still having a solo career, she moved on to become one of the best backing vocalists in the Bob Marley and the Wailers Band. The i Tree. she come together with Judy Mott, um, Rita Marley, and Marcia Griffiths. Yes? So, the high trees. Fantastic lineup. Now, I gotta tell you this now. Everybody's talking about Bob Marley. Bob Marley and the Wellers are great, man. But you wanna tune your ears, retune your ears sometimes, and listen to those backing vocals, how good they are. Because when you got an artist and you got a star, you sort of not listening to the backing vocals. But if you ever listen to that backing vocals of Marcia Griffiths, um, Judy Mort, and Rita Marley, the Icrees, absolutely fantastic. So, as I say, I am talking about the legendary Miss Marcia Griffiths. After that, Marcia Griffiths carried on and she carried on putting out tunes, putting out tunes. And then she, she did a track with, she did a, a, a original track that was actually done by Mr. Bonnie Whaler. Mr. Bonnie Whaler, yes. Um, the electric side, the electric boogie. Yes, Bonnie Whaler did it way, way back in the day. And then she actually recut re re it and remixed it up and re, re put it. And that became what we call a dance line craze in the United States, which the little electric boogie. That track is actually being mixed and it's actually out now. Marcia has actually continued to actually work, work, work. And as I say, she tells Dance Hall magazine that she actually, she was always constant. She says, um, even when she was having a child, she was constant. She says even though she had three deaths in her family, she was constant. She was constant working and she was constant doing it. And she says it's actually the music that actually had kept her going all over the years. So today, Marcia Griffith still makes great music and she's actually one of my favorite artists. She's actually what I call, as I say, giant. When I talk about giants of music, that's what I am talking about. She's been there for such a long time. You know what I mean? And we pay big, big respect to the legendary Marcia Griffiths, born in West Kingston. And what else can I say about her? You know what I mean? So we say, we actually love, I've, I've actually loved Marcia Griffiths for a very, very long time. And I got to say, even though there has always been different, different reggae artists, she is like sort of the, the, one of the main female reggae artists that I've actually known from such a long, long time within that period of time. So we say a big, big shout out to you, Marcia Griffiths. And you have been this week our giants of music. Once again, let me say thank you for tuning in to Breakthrough TV. My time is almost here. Let me say thanks to my very, very special guests. Um, and don't forget to catch me back next week with more guests right here on Breakthrough TV. I want to say thanks to my producer. And I say thanks to Heather Haywood and Big, big shout out to you. Thank you, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the program. God bless you. Take care.